think pretty much everyone has a room in their home that becomes the dumping ground for all those bits and pieces that actually belong somewhere else. And that is exactly what has happened in this room here. Yes, thanks, Juliet. All the kids' toys have spilled out of their rooms and into here. So basically, this room's become a bit of everything. And I think we can both relate to that with little boys at home, can't <laughs> we? We can. Mess everywhere all the time. But how do you find a theme for your room when you're redecorating? Well, I like to use the things that you love as inspiration. The homeowner here loves to get creative and draw these beautiful botanical illustrations. She also loves to paint landscapes. So I thought this would be the perfect sunroom for her creative activities as well as for relaxing. Yes, I love a sunroom. I'm just enjoying the sunlight in this room just right now. It's just beautiful, yeah. isn't it? So lovely. I just want to fill this whole room with greenery. Well, I love that. Yes, yeah, should we uh, clean Keep this stuff up? up first? Yes, yeah, come okay. on. <laughs> Water and carpets just don't mix, so we're ripping up the carpet and putting in some vinyl. And that is the floor down. This is loose lay cushioned vinyl and it couldn't be simpler. It doesn't require any glue underneath and it comes in lots of different sizes, so it's perfect for any room size. And I love this pattern, it's beautiful. Yeah, it creates some impact in here, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, we are creating a hanging ladder shelf to go in that big, beautiful window and put plants on. Really simple to make. And the best part is it's movable, so we can reposition it. And we're starting with some pre-primed pieces of pine that conveniently have been cut to size already. All right, bag's the nail gun. Let's do okay, this. OK, you're on. <laughs> creating a series of rectangular shelves and because they'll be tiered you'll notice that they're increasing in size. We're also adding a little timber trim and the idea is that that will support the see-through shelves. And we're using perspex for the shelves so that we don't block any of that beautiful light from the window and so that we maintain that greenhouse feel. Now this comes in large sheets which you can get cut to whatever size you like. Sides, we're just using two pieces of timber in a triangle to hold it all together. To hang this on the wall, we're using a split batten system, which will make it really easy to put up and then bring down again. So that just goes on there like that. We just need to glue it and screw it in place. And then all we need to do is fill the hole, give it a sand, paint it. We're almost done and no one's lost a finger, so I'm happy. Yeah, we've done well, no nail gun scars. We've gone with quite a retro plant palette. There might be some plants here that conjure up some lovely memories for you. For example, this beautiful Hoya. I always remember my grandma growing Hoyas. And these days, there's such an exciting range of leaf colours and textures. So check out this little speckled leaf variety here. And mother-in-law's tongue. I definitely remember that from my childhood. And that is as tough as old boots. My kind of house plant, if you can't kill it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also loving that we're including some things like chain of hearts, which will cascade down the shelves, and of course, ferns, which were so big in the 70s and now back in a big way. They are, and houseplants in general are really big in interiors at the moment because they're such a great styling tool. Yes, and they transform the whole look of the space, like this. They do. <laughs> This is a fantastic way to create some extra workspace. 
It's budget friendly and it's perfect for a variety of things like if you're doing art or crafts or even for the kids' homework. Anywhere where you need to really spread out. Yeah, so we're using this timber panel which you can buy off the shelf at your local hardware store. So you can use them in kitchens, bathrooms or in our case a sunroom. And we're going to start by giving it a good coat with a hard wearing varnish. I'm going to use the new bench top on the old table that was in the room before. And I'm going to paint black all around the edge of the old tabletop, which will give us a beautiful shadow line. This is going to be the artist's corner, and we have an unused window here. So I got the team to put together a shelving unit, which will go over the top and keep art supplies perfectly within arm's reach. We also have an easel and coming up later... Yes, we're going to show you how to create a living work of art that'll just bring something unique to this room. We are transforming this sun-drenched room into an oasis. It's going to be a hub for creativity and also somewhere to escape the chaos of the rest of the house. Yes, and I'm loving the sun on my back here. <laughs> so gorgeous, isn't it? Now, in interior design, we are seeing a lot of big, bold plants with big, bold pots. The thing that's really tricky is it's quite hard to find big indoor pots. So we're using these gorgeous big outdoor pots, which of course means they've got a drainage hole at the bottom. When you're doing this, make sure you use a black saucer, something like this, that you can place at the bottom before you plonk your plant in there. That way water won't spill out onto your surfaces. The mistake that a lot of people make in the winter time is that they overwater their indoor plants and kill them with love. So it's worth noting that most house plants actually like to dry out between watering. So I always do the finger test. You just poke your finger into the soil. If it's dry, down to your second knuckle, then it's time to get out the watering can. You might also notice that indoor plants can often become lighter when they need a water, and that's quite simply because the potting mix is dried out. And one of the other challenges the plants face in the winter indoors is that we often have these extremes in temperature. So we've got our heaters running, but we might also have drafts of really cold air coming through doors or windows. So if you want to keep them happy, keep them away from your heating vents and away from those cold drafts. Let's go high, let's go high. We're creating some picture frames with a botanical twist. And best of all, all you need are some old frames, some little glass jars or vials, and some cuttings from your favourite plants. We are using new frames here, but you could very easily use some old frames that you have lying around. And we're going to paint the frame white so that it ties in with the room, but also so that when we put the plant in the middle, it really pops. Yeah, it's going to look gorgeous. And I'm going to paint the little back of the frame and the mat with a bit of clear varnish because we're going to put water in these vials and we don't want it all to swell and get ruined. Perfect. You want the vial to sit roughly in the centre of the frame, but with room for the plant on top. So what we're going to do is drill some holes in the back of that frame that are roughly the size of the neck of the bottle. That way we can feed some floral wire through the back, tie it off to hold that vial in place. OK, now let's get these frames back together. We can put some water in the vial and decorate it with our indoor plant. This is the beautiful polka dot begonia. It's going to add a really fun, unique look to our picture frame. I absolutely love these. It's like show and tell. <laughs> it is. If you walked into a room and saw these as artwork, I think that is so cool because it's so unusual. And you can see how you get very different looks with very different plants. Exactly. When you're selecting furniture for your home, it's a really nice idea to choose pieces that make a statement, like this chair. It has a really lovely shape and also the warm timber ties in with the timber on the other side of the room in the desk. And isn't this a great idea for a table centrepiece? We've got this beautiful collection of bottles and vases. 
So what we've done is we've used cuttings and indoor plants growing in nothing but water. How unique is that? So gorgeous. So I so love that beautiful. you can see the roots there. And the way we've clustered all these vases here and made them work together, because we've stuck to just three colours. There's the soft green, there's the clear glass, and then there's a deeper green. And in terms of the sizes and shapes, well, we've used a variety of heights, which work really nicely together, and they all balance each other out. Plant-wise, the star of the show has to be these Phalaenopsis or moth orchids. It grows really well in filtered light indoors. It brings an elegant touch to the table, and those flowers last for ages. Yeah, and I love that there's the smaller ones and then the larger ones too. And I think this is such a great example of how injecting plants into your indoor spaces can just make such a difference. You're so right. It feels so lush in here. It's so inviting and really the perfect space to find inspiration. And do you remember what it used to look like? Oh, that carpet, those <laughs> toys, <laughs> very different. Yes, it's such a huge transformation. It really is now just a gorgeous creative space.